I thought today we'd do something slightly different. I wanted to kind of chat about the things that I've been loving recently. With it now being April, we've kind of gone through the first quarter of the year. So I was kind of just looking back on everything from movies, media, to food, to clothing and I thought I'd share it with you. It's not going to be super product heavy but more just about general things that I've been loving in life. So yeah I think let's just get straight into it. The first thing I wanted to chat about is actually knitting and crocheting related since that is the majority of my life but I wanted to share a couple yarn brands or types of yarn that I've been really enjoying the last few months. The first one is the Hobbycraft Lead of the Pack. I always talk about this. I love it so, so, so much. I love how fuzzy it is, but still it's not too chunky. So you get really nice texture from it. There is a Hobbycraft near me, so it's a lot easier for me to work with this yarn because if I run out, I can just quickly grab some more. Some people have said that they really struggle with this when they need to unravel anything, especially with like crochet, which I do agree with because it's so fuzzy and it is acrylic. Once you've worked up a project, especially a crochet project it's really really hard to unravel it it's kind of a bit like mohair where it just gets too i don't know stuck together so that's just one thing to keep in mind but this is like my holy grail at the moment i am really sorry if the lighting keeps changing throughout this uh, the sun is kind of peeking in and out of the clouds my phone isn't great at adjusting to the light so i hope it's not too off-putting the other yarn that i wanted to mention is this acrylic and wool blend which is i want to say the same as the leader of the pack the leader of the pack is an acrylic and alpaca mix so this is a acrylic and wool blend and I worked with this to create a vest which I gave to my mum and then I also made my first cable knit jumper with this. And again, very similar. It's nice and chunky but not too chunky and it has a tiny bit of fraying, not as much as the lead of the pack but just a little bit to make it a bit more fuzzy. As you can see, I don't have the label on it anymore but I'm gonna try and link as many things as I can down in the description. So I put a link to this exact yarn for you to have a look at. Like I mentioned, I made my first cable knit jumper with that and this is how it turned out. So the yarn is really nice and almost like glossy but it's super soft, which I just absolutely love. And this actually takes me to the next thing that I've kind of been loving the last few months and that is color analysis. This is something I haven't really delved that much into but I've been a lot more interested in mainly through like TikTok algorithm picking up on it and then kind of googling it with this whole entire year and my intention for the year being that I want to make more basics I want to hone in on the things that I really enjoy making so my knit and crochet projects have a lot more longevity part of that is also my color choices and the yarn that I buy. I think we can all relate to the fact that we might just grab colours that look fun and that are satisfying to work with and it's easy to kind of forget the colours that we actually enjoy wearing. So I've kind of been thinking about that a little bit more and I definitely think that in the colour analysis terms that I am a winter. I haven't quite figured out yet if I'm like a true or deep winter, whichever the differences are, um, but actually what made that apparent to me is this jumper and it made me think back to when I was younger I used to have kind of like a hoodie in this color and I really enjoyed wearing it and it makes sense that I really enjoy wearing denim and I've always really enjoyed kind of like navy stripey stuff as well so this kind of dark blue rich blue is definitely part of my color palette so what I ended up doing was looking at the color wheels from these sort of color analysis tables and finding this color and seeing what other colors are being suggested with that I'm still not 100% sure what my other colors are just because every kind of analysis table looks slightly different but I think it's just anything that is kind of darker muted but still sort of rich colors i have always known that anything pastel is really bad for me it just completely washes me out so it kind of makes sense that i then go in the opposite direction to kind of go for really rich colors which is why i was really happy with this yarn color choice because it just works for me this is a really good color for me to wear i feel super comfortable wearing it out which is really important as well because I want to be able to wear my pieces out 
much much more so hopefully i can kind of keep this in mind a little bit for future projects that i work on being completely realistic i know there's going to be some random projects where i'll go crazy with the colors because at the end of the day it's just a bit fun isn't it then moving into clothing i've really been getting back into my scrunchies this one is my absolute favorite it's a crochet one that i made i did make a tutorial for this so i'll link that down below i made kind of this knit one more recently and then this is one that i sewed ages ago it's really not perfect and what i actually have been doing is because i made two of these i've just been double layering them but i actually lost the other one so i don't know where that's gone but yeah i've just really been enjoying them because i do wear my hair up a lot pretty much like 80 percent of the time i wear my hair up and these are just so nice to put on to jazz it up a little bit i think especially the knit and the crochet ones are really refreshing because these types of scrunchies i don't know if they've just been like a bit overdone i still absolutely love them but whenever i feel like i just want to be a bit more funky with it then i really really like to wear this one an absolute favorite of mine has been this yellow handbag bag towards the end of 2023 i was really struggling with finding a good sort of handbag to have on nights out or just everyday life i'm very much a tote bag kind of person but sometimes i feel like i want to be a bit more fancy and a bit more dressed up so i was looking on vintage for a really long time and then i went to a charity shop and found this and i carried it around the shop for ages looking in different mirrors trying to figure out whether this was really really ugly or whether this was like ugly in a cool way. And I'm honestly so glad I got it. I think it was like 16 pounds. So it was definitely a bit more of an expensive charity shop purchase. It is originally from Debenhams. If anyone wants to look for a similar one on Vinted or on eBay, I'm sure there will be some, if not the same, at least like similar ones. When I was looking on Vinted prior to getting this one, I did find that M&S and Next had some really, really good like vintage bags. So if you are looking for a similar style, I'd recommend just looking for like high street brands on there. But yeah, this is just my absolute go-to now. I take it everywhere. Um, it fits so, so much in there. And I really like these details that make it a bit more interesting. It kind of changes color depending on what you're wearing, what the lighting is, where you are. Like right now, I feel like it looks quite yellow but then sometimes it looks really green sometimes it looks orange then this one is more of a recent purchase but i had been thinking about it for months and months and months and months and then when they announced their pre-order i just did it i just signed up for it i'm not one to spend a lot of money on clothing so this is definitely a big purchase for me but I got the Damson Matter leopard jeans and luckily I'm completely obsessed with them. I'm sure if I wasn't I could have sold them on Vinted but I love these so much. The fit is genuinely perfect. I do have to wear it with a different button because the waist is quite wide. I got a size 12. I am usually like a medium size 10 but with jeans I do like to size up a bit because I like the baggy look. So on the legs and sort of around the bum they are perfect it's just the waist that is a bit too big i think i will eventually just take in the side so i don't have to wear the button anymore but for now these are amazing i'm obsessed and I just want to wear them all of the time. Then I just wanted to mention a couple makeup bits. Unfortunately, both of these are German brands, but I still wanted to share them with you. This one has run out and I haven't been able to use it for a couple of months now, but it is the Vegan Lip Care Lip Gloss from Gitty in the color Joy Joba. And I use this as blush religiously. It's the perfect color on me and it's been out of stock since november december i actually haven't checked recently let me see maybe it is back in stock also it's the number three i just realized there's different numbers for it but this just always makes my skin so glowy like i said it's the perfect color for me and it just put everything together i just feel like my makeup hasn't been the same since i stopped using this so i just really hope that eventually they'll bring it back but yeah it's still out of stock it's genuinely been out of stock for five months now i don't understand then the other product is a lip product which i actually do use on my lips um i'm trying to figure out what like number or color it is i don't know i'll just put that up to the camera but it is this kind of nude brown-ish lipstick and I've been using this as kind of like my daily lip 
pop up. I have super translucent lips right around the edges here. So I've just been using it every day to kind of line my lips. I prefer this to a lip liner for an everyday kind of makeup because it's softer and I will then just kind of use my finger to blend it out. And it just gives me a bit more fullness without being over the top because again, I think this matches my natural lip color quite nicely. So it feels, yeah, really natural for me to wear this on a day-to-day -day basis. Then I also wanted to talk about some perfumes or some scents. I have never really worn perfume before, um, but then I got the classic, the glossier one in the Black Friday sale, and I have been really, really enjoying this. And then I got this one for Christmas for my sister, and this is amazing as well. I kind of like to just alternate between the two scents. Um, this one is just really handy for when I'm traveling because it fits into my liquid bag really nicely. Um, but it is the Faint Glow. I actually wore this and took it with me to my first back tattoo session and the tattooist took a photo of this to remember to buy his girlfriend because he liked the scent of this. So this one is a very good one. I always wanted to be that person that smells good. And people ask what perfume you're wearing. So that was very nice. Then I wanted to move on to a couple food items because I have been working on my sourdough starter for probably almost two months now i want to say and i actually think i'm going to retire it and at least put it in the fridge for a week try and restart it see how i feel but maybe this is the end of my sourdough starter era because not only is it time consuming feeding this every day i just can't get it right it's been through many stages um, there was one time where it was rising beautifully, but it just never rises within the maximum of 12 hours it's meant to rise in. I have since then found a warm spot in our flat to keep it in, and I thought maybe it just needs a bit of time to adjust to that sort of temperature, but it's just not doing it. What I have been doing instead is using the sourdough discard to use up because I just felt so bad throwing it away every day. It felt really wasteful. So I've made a couple really amazing recipes which I will share down below if you are looking for ways to use up your sourdough discard. Um, but one of them was a cookie recipe which they genuinely taste like shop-bought cookies in the best way possible and then this weekend i made a carrot cake and it was honestly insane it was just so good so 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 good so i kind of feel like not having a sourdough starter isn't even an option for me because i almost need the sourdough starter more now for the discard rather than the actual active start itself. Maybe bread making just isn't for me and I would just have to continue buying sourdough bread on a weekly basis because that is how this started. I am obsessed with sourdough and we have a loaf like every week, which like isn't that crazy of a concept. Me being from Germany, that is what you have you have breads all the time and it's very normal but in the UK it definitely isn't and people don't really eat a lot of good bread and that's another thing sourdough is meant to be really good for you so it almost feels like you're doing something good for your body whilst also eating bread which is delicious looking after the sourdough starters got me into a big love for baking i don't know how long this is going to continue on but sort of the last month i've really been enjoying it i've been making my own muesli like i said i've been making the cookies baking the cake i tried making pizza that didn't go too well but it is something that i really like to continue on it's very wholesome and it feels like with my knitting and crocheting it has become obviously my job i feel like i was missing this kind of like hobby that i'm not making money from so it's just for me and it just feels really wholesome and like meditative to like make something from scratch then the last kind of category of things that i wanted to talk about is a bit more kind of media based i've really rediscovered my love for reading recently mainly through audiobooks they've just been so helpful for when i'm working on knitting and crocheting project for a really long time to kind of keep me occupied in a bit more of a productive way rather than just watching tv or youtube so i've been listening to audiobooks on spotify and when i then use up my maximum 15 hours listening time on there i then move on to the libby app and kind of listen to books on there my absolute favorite 
this year has been Down the Drain by Julia Fox. Um, I just loved it so much. I love books like that. I was almost like trying to find knitting and crocheting projects to do so I could listen to the audiobook, which is quite a nice way to think about it. But yeah, it definitely kept me occupied, especially during sort of February, March time when I launched my scooties and I was making a lot of crochet scooties. I could not have gone through that without audiobooks. Then a couple movies that I have been enjoying so far this year. I watched Killers of the Flower Moon. I really wasn't that bothered about watching it before. Any movie that's three hours long, I'm just like, does it need to be three hours long? But it was really 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 good we watched it in two parts just because three hours is a long time but it was honestly amazing the cinematography is incredible the story is so interesting it's something i didn't know about the acting amazing and lily gladstone was incredible i still think she was absolutely robbed at the oscars i love emma stone but Lily Gladstone should have won that Oscar and I would die on that hill. I have since then also watched Poor Things. Keep in mind I did watch Poor Things after the Oscars, so maybe my opinion was slightly shifted because I was already annoyed that Lily Gladstone didn't win the Oscar. But I have to say, not as impressed with Poor Things. And I will leave it at that. I also recently finally watched All of Us Strangers and oh my god, it was so sad. So, so, so sad. Like, I just kept saying, this is so sad. I really went into this thinking Paul Meskel, Andrew Scott, my two top male celebrity crushes and then it just got so sad. It is an amazing film, it's definitely one where you kind of keep thinking about it for a really long time after having watched it and then in terms of TV series like I mentioned if I'm not listening to audiobooks I do watch a lot of TV and you know what I'm not gonna be embarrassed about that. I love watching TV. <laughs> there were a few really good series that I watched, um, a couple sort of detective ones, obviously True Detective the new season came out. We started I started watching it and I didn't really get into it that much but then I watched Jodie Foster on Graham Norton and it convinced me to give it another go and then I was completely obsessed with it. It was so 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 good. At the same time we were watching Criminal Records also on Apple TV. Absolutely love that. I love a UK detective drama. I remember lockdown we binged all of Line of Duty so it very much had that very similar feel of corruption within the police system. The main character was amazing. She was kind of unlikable but you're still kind of rooting for her. I also watched Mr. And Mrs. Smith on Amazon Prime and I binged it in one day. One day I watched the whole series. I can't even remember what I was making at the time but it must have just been like a day where I sat on the sofa knitting or crocheting and I watched it and it was so good. I feel like if you liked Killing Eve you'll enjoy this one and then more recently have been completely obsessed with Married at First Sight Australia. It has taken over my life Friday, Saturday, Sunday when it's not on are the worst days and I just never want it to finish. This is the first time I watched it from the beginning and really gotten into it and it's just amazing. It's such a good show. I don't know if the series is just really good but yeah it's amazing and I might even go back to previous seasons and watch those when this season is done. But yeah, that is everything I wanted to share with you, everything that I've kind of been loving and enjoying the last four months. Like I said, not super product heavy, just kind of things that I've been enjoying. But I like to think that I don't really purchase a lot of things. I've been spending a lot of money on kind of home items, but they're not really worth sharing in this video just because they feel more practical and like a necessity. But yeah, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you've been loving in terms of like movies, books, any recommendations. Please leave them in the comments below and yeah, I'll just see you next time.